Today on The Happy House, presented by Creative Kid Stuff. I'm back at Tonkadale Greenhouse with Jesse, and we are creating a beautiful indoor houseplant project. And then... Uh, so I'm a magazine editor by day. Um, I host a radio show. I write, I edit, and I'm a mom. And finally... I'm with my friend Peggy, and we are talking about ways to use trays. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm happy. <laughs> I learned early on things are much easier with a little help. I also have a few tricks of my own to share. It's go time, people. Welcome to the Happy House, presented by Creative Kid Stuff. Our gardening segment today is brought to you by Super Moms. Jesse, I'm so excited to be here today because I have really never seen anything like it. It's so pretty and just sort of fun. It's fresh and springy. Yeah, earthy. So what we're going to be making is called a Cocodama Ball. Coca meaning moss and dama meaning ball. It's like an old Japanese string garden tradition. Okay. These are so pretty. I just want to yeah. show it. I so love these them. can be hung or set. How, so it's super easy to make. Let's put our gloves on first. Mm -hmm. We're getting serious when we wear the gloves. I, I just, I love the gloves. <laughs> I actually like them too because I always think I don't want to wear them like when I paint or make hamburger patties or do oh, things like this. Patties. I know. Okay. So we're going to um, make our soil mix. Traditionalists like to use the actual Akadama soil from the volcanic soils in Japan. Okay. We're just going to make our own from We don't have access to that. So readily much. available materials okay. at your local garden center. I like it. So we have um, a bonsai mix. So this has a lot of clay in it. It kind of looks like kitty litter, mm -hmm. actually. So we're going to mix three parts of that to seven parts of soil. Okay. Three. I'm going to pour in. One. So that ripped. Two. <laughs> it's all right. I'm working on this part of the project. I know. You're doing a great job. All right. I did the three. Okay. Now we need to do seven. Do you think that's a weird ratio? Because I feel like if you need to cut it in half, it's like... One and a half. One and a half to three and a half. half. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> I did the math. I just mathed that for us. Yes, you sure did. <laughs> I'm kind of making a mess. I kind of think this is actually the hardest part of this project is putting these gloves on. <laughs> so this is just a regular potting soil you can find at a garden center. Bonsai soil mix. You got it. All right. Is that seven? Yep. Now we just need to mix it. You can okay. use the shovel or your hands. All right, I'm going to get in there. Remember when we mixed the bird seed and we had to um, put butter on our hands? Yeah. We don't have to do that today. That's nice. Okay. So then we end up with this sort of dirt, rocky, but really clay part mixture. Then we're going to add some wawa. Okay. Water. Some water. Yeah. And then you want me to kind of work like, with it to see how it is? Yeah. If you want to be really fancy, you'd use like snow melt water, rain water, some water that's not like chlorinated and full of yeah. all that stuff well I this keep all that on hand I save it at my house you just collect rainwater <laughs> and melt snow no. okay people right. are like serious about this stuff yeah. like melting snow and watering your plants with it I don't know I mean you gotta do you you gotta do you okay so we didn't need the shovel we'll put that over here because well, I got in there with my hand oh you tell me what you think I think it's really good okay so we're just gonna start forming a ball mine seems small is this too small mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you want to um, probably think about the plant you're trying to accommodate yeah. within the ball. So I've chosen a selection of four inch plants that would be suitable for a Kokodama ball. So you can do any kind of plant. It's probably more recommended to use low light plants because if the moss and things are in like direct sunlight, they're going to dry out really fast. Got it. Is this? I think that's looking really great. We did a great job on the ratio of water here. Yeah. Let's set our balls aside. Which plant would you like to work Ooh, with? I kind of want this one. The fern. Okay, yeah. that's a really good choice. So that's a mother fern. Mm -hmm. Can you just um, pop it out of the container? I sure can. Yep. And yeah. what we're going to do is try to get as much of the existing soil off of the plant. And I can and put it in here even with yeah. our mixture? Yeah, let's just put it in here. I always feel afraid when I'm, I'm doing I this because I can, I can hear the roots, but that's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of... So maybe just try... Softening it up like this, and then you can kind of shake dirt off. Tease the roots versus ripping them. <laughs> I'm a root ripper. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna do the the salad janella moss. That's pretty. And like sometimes that. plants can be like if you wanted to do a smaller one, you could divide that in half. Yep. Okay. So this is ready. 
This is sheet moss. Um, please be advised, this is dyed sheet moss, so it's going to be a little bit green in color when we get it wet. Okay. And we're wearing gloves, so you can use just a natural sheet moss, but I like the dyed because yeah. then it holds its color nice. So we're gonna we're gonna moisten the sheet moss. And that's a lot. I mean, this is a substantial amount of water we're using for this project. Yeah. But it's snow melt, so it's yeah. it's fine. Okay. That's really good. Yes. Then we need to prepare our cheesecloth. And is this just like the cheesecloth you could get at your grocery store in the baking area or? Yeah, for a four inch plant, you need a square about this size because we're gonna wrap it around our ball. Yep. So now we're ready to rock. Now okay. this is the part that excites me because it's okay. kind of like twisting an Oreo. Okay. So we're gonna like twist and pull it apart. We basically wanna break the ball in half without it's making me nervous. Crumbling it. Okay, I'm gonna watch you. And guess what? If it crumbles, we can start over. Nice. I did it. <laughs> okay, I think I did it, right? So now we're gonna place our plant's root ball. Oh, okay. Inside. And it's like the tall way. I mean, right? So I'm making like a, a sandwich. Yeah, that's, that's exactly Gosh. right. A sandwich. Things are kind of breaking down a little bit over here. Just like, go with it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna squeeze it back together. Yep. It's kind of like a po like you're making a ponytail at the top. Yeah. My daughter won't let me touch her hair oh. or make ponytails. Okay. So this is what I have to do to get <laughs> to get, that kind to of get by. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then we'll place it in the middle of our cheesecloth okay. and pull up the four corners. And if you have a little extra, just kind of tuck it, or we could trim it down. But I feel like I don't really have a lot of extra. Okay. I mean, there might be some, but yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. Okay. And now we choose a generous piece of sheet moss. So it's kind of nice if you can do it with one continuous piece, but mm -hmm. definitely not required. Which one? Uh, maybe that one. Look this at one? how that looks yeah. like the continent of Asia. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, it's sort of map-like. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. so then we just are gonna cover the ball completely with the sheet moss. So is there any particular way I'm doing this or I'm just trying to get just this Just kind of wrap covered? it. It's like reverse peeling an orange. Okay. So am I gonna have extra, do you think? Or yeah, do I just, just keep going? Yeah, don't, you don't wanna like double layer it. Okay. So just rip it okay. if you have extra. We'll put it back in the bucket. Mine's like aggressively mossy. <laughs> there, is this like? That is really good. Mine is a little wonky. <laughs> Here. This is messy. So now we're going to take some twine or cotton rope. Do you tie your turkey legs together with these things? Yep, yeah. I sure do. Sure do. Mm -hmm. So you want to tie it off and then just start wrapping it. So tie it off, what do you mean? Like do one initial thing and tie it to anchor it yeah. and then start wrapping. And then start wrapping. So I'll go first. Okay. And then the only thing that's really kind of tragic is that you'd then have muddy rope. Well, it doesn't bother me, honestly. Really? Yeah, it's earthy. It's kind of bothering me. Okay. <laughs> so you could use um, like jute, you could use colored rope, you could add beads and baubles. Like some um, copper wire would be really pretty. Oh yeah. Fishing line if you want it to be kind of like invisible. Yeah. finished tying these and securing the moss around. What is next? Well, in case you need a little bit of help, you could use something like a greening pin. You could probably use a bobby pin okay. too, and we can just make sure. Just make sure everything's, everything's secure. secure. You get the idea. Yep. And then there's a really simple way to create a hanger. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is make an X with this string on the table. About how long is that? Like 36 inches or? Exactly 36 inches. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so set that right on the middle of the X. Okay. 
and then we'll just bring up L4 strings, tie a knot. That there you go. is adorable. Isn't that cute? I love it. I it's love it. Ready to hang. It's ready to hang. This would be such a fun project to do with kids because yeah. they like to get messy. So messy. Yes. Thank you so much, Jesse. Well, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Coming up next on The Happy House. From the time my first child was born, I thought I'm gonna do my writing when he's napping or when he, you know, when he got older when he's at school, and I'm gonna do my running around with my kids. Because yes. I wanna be with my kids. Right. Today's Supermom is Allison Kaplan. Allison, tell us a little bit about what you do. So I'm a magazine editor. I work that at That seems Miami. exciting. It is exciting. Yes, it's not quite as glamorous as people think every day, but there are moments, yes. moments of glamour and it. intrigue. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a magazine editor by day. Um, I host a radio show. I do things like this. I write, I edit, and I'm a mom. Um, and you're a mom. And I'm a mom. That, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's that. <laughs> there's that. I should have so, said that first, well, right? Well, I yes. mean, no, it's okay. <laughs> How do you marry those two things up? Because I know we just joked about it, like, oh, and I'm a mom, but mm -hmm. that is honestly... It's huge. Right. It's huge. So how do you marry those things? Well, it's funny because I talk to a lot of busy women who try to compartmentalize everything. Mm -hmm. You know, who they work during these hours. When they get home, they shut everything down and then they're really present. I'm terrible at that. Everything is all mashed up. That's how it is for me too. And I find that that whole work-life balance thing stresses me out. Like yeah. I just want to work and live all the time. Right. Me so, too. Yes. Me too. And I'm lucky in that what I do, you know, I'm a lifestyle editor. I write primarily about shopping and style. And so my job requires me to be out in the world doing things. And from the time my first child was born, I thought I'm going to do my writing when he's napping or when he, you know, when he got older, when he's at school and I'm going to do my running around with my kids because yes. I want to be with my kids. Right. So it was a little tricky when Oscar was afraid of mannequins because I go to a lot of stores. <laughs> So we had some rough months there, but yeah. we worked through it. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I've always brought my kids with me whenever I can and whenever it's realistic. And I actually think that's okay. I think it's healthy for it. them to see that I'm working and discuss why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I like that. I think more people should take that approach because it is interesting how kids can learn about negotiation skills by watching something happen or learn just different life skills yeah. that they might not learn just if they're at home all the time right. or not part of those experiences. Right, and getting to see what I do so it isn't such a mystery mm -hmm. and just kind of getting to see how you balance different aspects of your life. Now, I mean, the, the con on that is that they go to bed and then I'm usually back on my laptop yeah. writing and doing things that, I, you know, emailing. I always say the best time to reach a busy woman is late at night yes. after the kids go. Oh, I respond. We're all we're, online. You and I have done, totally. you're like, why are the you up? Why are you working? Always. Okay. <laughs> why we're all doing the same thing. Yes. So it makes me feel good. But you know what? That's a trade-off that I am more than willing to make if it means that I'm able to come home earlier, be at the games, be, do the doctor's appointments, and spend more time with my kids. All right, here is the question of the moment. What is your favorite part about being a mom? Oh, the cuddles. I know, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, and they still are willing to do that. So and, I just, I yeah. And you have two boys. I've I met do. both of them, they're so amazing. Yeah. Thank They're you. not the same though. They're oh my gosh! They night are and day. Totally different. Isn't totally that crazy? different. It is, and it's fun. And you know what? And I I like both things equally. And yeah. I go to baseball games for one, and I go to theater performances with the other. Yeah. And you know, and they do things together. And um, yeah, it's it's really interesting to see how you can produce two totally different humans. I I agree. I mean, I have four different yes. humans and they're all, it's just, I think it's one of my favorite parts about being a parent. Honestly. Yeah. Just kind of discovering who they are and sort of watching them evolve. That's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Well, you have some pretty cool kids. Thank and you. You, are you do too. Mom. Thank you. So thanks for coming in to talk okay. to us. My pleasure. Hey, Oscar. Hey, what? <laughs> I know your mom. Yeah. She's kind of a super mom, right? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing about your mom? My favorite thing about my mom is how she can multitask like 10 things at once. Really? She, mm-hmm. <laughs> so she'll be like in the car driving uh, my brother and me to some random place, wherever we're going. <laughs> She's talking on the phone, do, doing like a business call or something. 
She's feeding us at the same time. It's just, it's just crazy. So that's my favorite thing about my mom, how she can do so many things at once. That's, uh, she really is a super mom. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Coming up next on The Happy House, I'm with my friend Peggy, and we are talking about ways to entertain with trays. Today's entertaining segment is brought to you by Super Moms. Peggy, I love to entertain, as do you. I do. And sometimes we entertain kiddos, grown-ups, kiddos, everybody. Yeah. So I was searching the World Wide Web. And <laughs> that's, that's a thing. That's a thing. And I saw a really cute idea for putting together kids' trays, much like what you've put together today. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about it. And you told me that you have entertained with trays before and had all kinds of fun ideas. And talk to me about what we're looking at here ultimate flexibility. So we've got trays three ways today. Okay. And one, like you said, is for kiddos. I love okay. this. Who wouldn't love that? What kid? I want, I, I mean, want teenagers, this. right? Yeah. We're like, oh, thanks mom. Yeah. And you could bring it down um, to a kid sleeping over or to a scout meeting like this, or each, you could serve it up like each kid can pick their own and you can have the ingredients and they could build their own trays, right? This actually makes everything so much more stable mm -hmm. or this is kind of an accessible amount of food for a sick child, but like when you've got somebody who's under the weather yeah. and you want them yeah. to have nice food by when they're laying on the couch yeah. or whatever, this is so stable and, yeah. and sturdy. I like that. And you found these cute little, like it just makes yeah. everything more fun. These right? are just silicone just, baking yeah. cups. And I think that this is so fun. And then just throw them in the dishwasher when you're done. They're adorable. Here is another option. We made kind of our barbecue or outdoor picnic-y look right there and we have your fabulous double burger in there <laughs> which is pretty amazing go big or go yeah, home yeah. i think that this is really great because a lot of times when you have a lot of people over you may just have camp chairs and not table space for oh, everybody for sure so yeah. especially like on a yeah. cookout or yep. whatever yep. so having this as your table on your lap makes it really easy to eat mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also i want this hamburger right now <laughs> I think this is such a fun idea, and I like these little cups with just everything in there. And this could be done, honestly, these are not disposable, but like with tiny disposable, they are shot glasses, but they don't need to be used for shots. You could buy oh, disposable. Oh, are they? I didn't even th well, these are shot glasses. <laughs> I don't know what these are. <laughs> okay. But in the grocery store, in the um, paper aisle, yep. they will have big cups, small cups, but just buying mm -hmm. a whole bunch of disposable little cups yep. for people to Definitely. fill up their own size, I think is a great idea. Like 20 years ago, my girlfriend and I each bought bamboo trays. You remember those yes. for ladies' luncheon? You yeah. could go in with a girlfriend or a friend and each buy some of these and then share them back and forth. I think it's a great idea. Having a collection of like 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20 of these mm -hmm. is not a huge investment to share yeah. back and forth yep. and they're going to last forever. Totally, totally. Third option here is like our cheese flight <gasps> situation. You know, Crackers, which is my favorite, fruits. right? Yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cheese all day, yeah, every day. Yeah. Yes. So you just plunk in uh, various cheeses, uh, fruit, crackers, and um, you had the idea of using these fabulous cups for beverages. We have some sparkling juice today, but you yep. get how fun, you know, the kids like to look at what the adults do, but yeah. like this is like a white bubbly and a red bubbly and tap water or soda or whatever. And I love this for if you're having a small group over, like let's just say whatever, two other couples or yeah. whatever, you can make these up ahead of time, mm -hmm. put them in your fridge or let them sit because a lot of times cheeses, cheeses are better. Are better. Warm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just everybody knows what they're doing and you could even like mark like, okay, we're first tasting this. Oh, we're yeah. first tasting. Lay like them that. out in a row. Yeah, lay yeah. them out in a row or a just kind of do that whole thing for mm -hmm. an experience. Yeah. So I love it. It's really fun. As you said, these are all customizable. So we are going to each build a tray now. Thoughts let's on see. that? Yeah, let's build them. Investing in a set of small cookie slash baking sheets is a great idea to have on hand as a hostess. They can be done so many ways. They can be used at outdoor barbecues. They also can be great for sleepover parties or even when you've got sick kiddos and they need food brought to them while they're resting. And of course, my favorite, you could host a cheese party and assemble an assortment of cheeses for everybody and make those ahead of time so people can try a flight of cheese and drinks. Peggy, we just built some trays. 
And I decided to go with a soup theme. You're back on the cheese theme. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah, cheese all day, all the time. So basically, I chose like a tomato soup and then honestly just use a lot of whole foods here. Just an avocado that you can use, eat with a spoon, put it in your I like to eat avocados spoon. with a spoon. I do too. <laughs> Add a little sweet, savory. I have this mustard here with the pretzels. So honestly, this is just sort of a little lunch tray I created. It looks great. I love this paper. I do too. I love, who doesn't love checkers? Mm -hmm. And paper. Do you like yeah. paper, Peggy? Come on. <laughs> And tell me about what you built. And so mine is kind of the natural look with the browns. I like the brown, like the industrial with kind of the artisanal look. And also if you want to wrap things up with twine, that looks really good too. So yeah, the cheeses, nuts, different fruits and uh, get ready to eat. Yeah, this is definitely protein packed. I think this is also, pro like we're all more about protein yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this was lots of fun. There are endless ideas. And again, this is just a practical solution to entertaining and eating with your family, either way. Have fun with it, be creative. I know, I love it. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Obviously. We would like to see trays your way on our Facebook page. So post pictures to the happy house on Facebook.